That was horrible. It's been six days to the month. Six days to the month. To, from what exactly? Since the last sighting of Bigfoot. Is it really that soon? I yeah, feel like it's been it's six, been a minute. Six days ago. I mean, I, I mean, like six seconds ago, I saw him pass by. He went to take a shower because he's our he's our roommate right now. He didn't really yeah. have a place to live, so I thought we could give him. I, you know, I, I, did, did you not? You didn't. You didn't think anything of like the big footprints and the carpet, you know, or like the hair on all the couches, like no, no, nothing, nothing no. weird about that. Bigfoot is my roommate is like the greatest like spinoff of Harry and the Hendersons <laughs> I think I've ever heard in my life. It's Was big, he a Bigfoot? Bigfoot was, in the was house. Harry and the Bigfoot. Harry, Harry and the Hendersons. Harry and the Bigfoot. Harry and the Hendersons. I think it was definitely like a Sasquatch story. It's okay, but what's the difference between a Sasquatch? I and was Bigfoot? actually wondering. I was like, I don't. What is the difference between? Is it just like Bigfoot is the popular one? Like Bigfoot is like the name brand version of a Sasquatch? Just like, well, I feel like it's like classifications of a of a Sasquatch because like I feel like a Yeti is also a Sasquatch, and they're just like the cold version well, of a Sasquatch, right? From from my my perspective, yeah, yeah, as, yeah. as a as a believer, I think that uh, they're both the same thing. Oh, okay. And Bigfoot's actually real, and Sasquatch is a fake. Oh, okay. So, so you're you're a you're a you're a Sasquatch skeptic. I'm a big you I'm a big lever, not a Sas skeptic. I'm a I'm wait. <laughs> I'm a sas I'm a sas skeptic, sas skeptic, but not a big. I'm a big lever, big lover. <laughs> I'm a big big lever. I see. What a big lever, not a sas skeptic. Where do you sit in the Bigfoot world? <laughs> uh, one time, I went to a Bigfoot museum and I saw an imprint of his ass. That was pretty great. Did you smell it? No, absolutely, I did. I got right up in there, and they said the weirdest <laughs> part. The weirdest part about that is they said you really should do this. Like, there's a big sign next to it, it says like "sniff here," and it's got a picture of like a big nose. Okay, the way you said, a big you said that was such conviction. I believe. <laughs> I was like, there is no fucking way. No, absolutely, and there's like a, a sign next to that one too. Is like you sh- lick it too. I, you okay. should like. It's you like, ever eaten ass? You ever eaten Bigfoot ass? It's salty because it's like it's in rock. Like it's like it's like a mold of the the imprint. Okay, so Isaac, so as, I didn't get the full experience. I didn't someone, pay the VIP package for that one. <laughs> as someone with pedophobia, the fear of feet. That sounds so bad. You can't, <laughs> the, just start with fear of feet, because <laughs> the other one sounds really bad. <laughs> Isn't that? I looked this up. You, I think you're right. It's just like when you say it out loud, it's like as someone with what? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, uh, it's podophobia. 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 That's a lot better. <laughs> so yes, anyway, as someone with a fear of feet. Of no, podophobia. officer, I'm a podophobe. No, officer, no. you don't understand. I misspoke. <laughs> I was just in my filing cabinet, and words got mixed up. Oh my get god, podophile. Okay, <laughs> terrible. So, terrible. As someone w- who's a podophobic, yes. Uh, <laughs> That's me, yes. Hello. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad I have a platform to stand on here. <laughs> and I don't stand up with my feet because no, no feet. You can't um, even say the word. What was that sound? It was my horse. Oh, uh, there's a horse in here. <laughs> Why is there a horse in here? Because you're on a podcast. And you can talk and you guys are all okay with that. That's cool. And it is a podcast about horror movies. <laughs> You want to tell him what it is before Derek asks his question about feet? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I'm up here uh, uh, as known podophobic uh, man. Uh, I am Isaac. <laughs> and I'm down here. I am the co-host. My name is High Horse Palomino. And then, First name High. Middle name Horse. Last and, name Ramamino. And who, what's the name of your wrangler there, over there in the corner? That's Jim. Jim? No, what about next to him, holding him? That's... <laughs> It's Derek. He's uh, he got fired. Oh no, Derek got fired. Yeah, he's building boxes. What do you want to help me, me introduce the podcast then? So I'm <laughs> Isaac, and you are I'm my horse, my homie, no. And this is that, that was, was horrible. horrible. This is our podcast where we do our best. Uh huh. Okay. Cool. He's got the in horror movie. In horror movie. <laughs> You're doing a great job. You're, you've you. really you've really done a lot of the work, the homework, and I'm really I, proud of you. I think I did better than Derek. He sucks. <laughs> He does a bad <laughs> job every time. Anyway. So, so your question uh, for can me. I, can I ask the question? All right, well, bye. you got fired, but, uh, you know, it is your birthday. It's is not, it? but <laughs> birthday's coming be. up. Uh, one month from two days ago. Whoa. So as mm-hmm. a known podophobe. Yes. Like you have a card that you have to give people at their door whenever you move into a new neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, don't be walking out on the street with your with your with your dogs out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no dogs those, allowed. Keep those puppies on on lock, please. How do you feel about Bigfoot? <laughs> How do I feel about Bigfoot? I honestly just try to ignore the fact that he's got these big old honkers stinking up the place. Is that like why he's called Bigfoot? Or I thought it was because like his footprints. 
Well, I mean, like those two go hand in hand, right? Like big footprint means big foot, right? But I suppose it could just be large. I don't know why we have to think like the Yeti, exi- the Sasquatch exists, and then the feet are exceptionally large in that. Why is it not all like proportionate? Because yeah. uh, even true. in like those old, he's like, just a big guy. Yeah, because even like the old photos of like Bigfoot walking through the woods, you know, he's got that that stride in him. You know that that the, the, those photos. He like he doesn't look like he has gigantic feet in comparison to his body. What yeah. if he's just a large man? I think he's just a big guy in a suit. <laughs> yeah. That, but, that, that, oh that. lord! Don't look at my computer. Oh, I, I there's Googled so feet. many feet on the screen. I think now is the time where we should discuss where your feet of fear, fear of fear, <laughs> well, <laughs> your I, feet of fear. Where I your was foot fear came uh, a, from a, a giant foot uh, crushed my father when I was, was a that child. True? That's true. Yeah. yeah. He was uh he 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 walks with a, he walks fine just with a little li- a limp. So it was and like it, the, the intro to the Monty Python's Flying Circus where that foot comes down and goes. Pfft. That's exactly Derek. I'm getting tr- please. <laughs> can we can we change the subject here? That's, that's kind of that's a sore subject so for if me. So I started it. humming the Monty Python's Flying, just, just, flying just, Circus just, theme song. Yeah, would like, it would be bad. It'd be, it'd be kick. Oh God! Oh no! Oh God! The toes! <laughs> 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 oh, no, Chris, no, All right, Chris, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Over your head. I stop. Oh, I stop. Okay. Uh, what if I told you that you could. Replace your fingers with feet. I actually have. I actually have those little those little Bigfoot finger feet you're looking at there. That you, like, They're in my room right feet. now. I could go get them. But you hate feet. You're a podophobe. Bigfoot is like the only thing that kind of gets there. Derek, how do you like? What do you? Where do you stand on like Bigfoot, real or not? Okay, so uh, the mic was... the mic goes over to you. Hey, uh, hey, folks, you, you're welcome back here. To that was horrible news, and I'm here with Derek <laughs> Wayman here to discuss <laughs> hey, his we? beliefs on the big lever. Uh, what do you think here? Are you a sash skeptic? I was. I was in the other room. Did we do we announce the podcast? Okay, we, yeah, it was great. Okay. Yeah, no, I did it. I did it. Um, with uh, with your <clears throat> replace <clears throat> with your uh, with our that would be crazy to do an entire episode as <laughs> High Horse Palomino, <laughs> just really commit I, to the bit and be like, you have been replaced by your horse. But doing it for those like thirty <laughs> seconds or whatever hurt my throat. No, yeah. Anyway, so my opinion on Bigfoot. Yeah, so where do you stand on the big foot, big feet? Are you a big feet I love, lover? I love bringing up my childhood in this podcast. He loves the feet. He loves them so much. Does, stinky, holding, stinky. does the holding the microphone make this better? Yes. <laughs> okay. It makes yeah. me feel like I'm a real-time reporter holding this fake Thank microphone you. up to your mouth. Uh, shove it down my throat, please. Oh. Giggity. Uh, so, <laughs> the... Uh, God damn it. <laughs> no, so when I was a kid... Your childhood, yes. I had, like, We're back a little Derek. fears. Pop, pop, pop. Probably because I didn't really have like father figure or mother figure growing up. Like I was I was pretty much on my own. Yeah. Like so taking you, care of my brother. You replaced the father figure with with Bigfoot. No well, <laughs> no. So I was scared. Bigfoot raised me. There's a reason I became so obsessed with like cryptids yeah, and yeah. like true crime and stuff like that, because it horrified me yep. growing up. I remember we took a trip with the Boy Scouts up to Bear Lake in, uh-huh. in Utah. It's a lake on the on the border of Idaho and Utah. I think they have and naked bears up there? Or? They have a lot of naked bears wow, up there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I went to a weird camp. They just had to change it was the, the name. Boy Scouts. It was originally naked... <laughs> But I bum, bum, it was originally bum, bum. Naked Bear Lake, but then they're like, no one's going to come to this thing. We no, have to change it. Well, you now can see all if, the signs. It's like scratched off. Here's the thing, though. If naked. they changed it now back to Naked Bear Lake, it would be more popular. I was going to say they probably get like an influx in business. Yeah, it would be like the gay pride day at, at so Disneyland, like for June. But, they just so, have like like Naked Bear weekend. I you know, like a happen. cool. That sounds like a cool event. <laughs> Go I bears! Get, I get letters in my inbox like, "Hey, you want to come be at this <laughs> be at this event as official naked bear?" I'm not. What am I doing? How did they okay, know? So they <laughs> found me by my body hair. <laughs> no, they so found me you by my body like, hair. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they found me by my body hair. <laughs> <laughs> they have a hairometer. They hold it out like they're the Ghostbuster. <laughs> With their EK meter, <laughs> busting feels good. <laughs> Not even makes me; it just it feels good. <laughs> busting feels good at Bear Lake, Bear Lake, Bear Lake, Harry Bear Lake. <laughs> oh God, what have we done? Okay, uh, so we call a callback. <laughs> That's a callback to our like arguably most popular, the best bit we've <laughs> ever done. Ever. Okay, so, so that was real, by the way. That that whole thing. It wasn't I mean, planned. that's probably why it was so famous. That's what happens, right? Like you can't you can't plan for funny bits like that. They just no. happen. <laughs> yeah. So just... you were you were a Bear Lake I was as a, a children. Lake. Yeah, and and I remember hearing the story of uh, what's the Nessie Nessie. Nessie. You know, I gotta Ness- say nep- nepotitis. Nessie. Ne- ne- nep- nepotism. Nepotism. <laughs> That's Nessie's daughter who got in the business just because of her. 
<laughs> and there's like other there's other sea creatures that yeah, exactly. want to move in. No, exactly. But nepoti- nepotism heavy. Ne- Nessie. Nep- nepotiz- nepotizzy. 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 <laughs> is getting in the way of all of that. <laughs> Big Nessie. They auditioned. They worked for weeks to get Month ready season. for this role. They yeah. they they had actually worked with um with uh with the the sea monsters yeah. from uh from Pacific Rim actually yeah, they is where did. they got the kaiju's from there. But unfortunately, they were lessy. <laughs> See what it is there? Lessy for nepotessi. <laughs> no, but really, like, I feel like I never went to really any camps as a child. I think I went to one total in my in my entire childhood. And I feel like that's something I kind of missed out on. It's like you get to talk about, like, monsters and stuff, tell scary stories around the campfire, like, in your little sleeping bags. Is that true? Is that what happened to you? I mean, sometimes there, there are specific stories that, like, traumatized me. Yeah, no, I and bet. I, I remember, so there was that one. There was the one about about Nessie and how because there's actually a lot of theories that that Nessie is in Bear Lake that's there's like there's like a name they I, I, I know for a fact Bear Lake has like a like a cryptid mo- water monster of some kind that has some name I want to it might just be like the Bear Lake monster yeah it is yeah, the Bear Lake just monster. Bear Lake monster yep which I mean and fine I, it's a fine naming this convention day, feel like I did see it that weekend yeah but I mean again that was me as a kid you never know what ever happened but some because of that mm-hmm. People f- like honed in on the fact that I was like a kid and scared of it. So oh, they started telling me so other they cryptid targeted stories. you. Yeah. You know, so I we wish went I on had another a time camp. machine that I could like go back and see those kinds of things. Like, did I really see that? Was there really oh, the man. Bear Lake monster I in that lake? I, I wish I could go back. <laughs> so, so you, uh, they told you more stories. Yeah. So, so it was a different camp. It was like it was the same year. I remember we went up to a different place and they told me Bear Bigfoot was there. Oh. And then these, pretty easy. these stupid kids oh, no. started groaning and rubbing up against our tent in the middle of the night. What? And I was so freaking scared. Oh no. I was way. so scared. Like how but old were you at this time? Then come to find out, like later, that it was actually a cow who was rubbing up against our tent. So it wasn't it wasn't boys. No, but that's what we thought. And so we kept doing this like were you rubbing up against our tent last night and they were like uh, no, but like one kid was like taking credit for it. So he then it so was, he ruined the illusion here. Then the next night yeah, yeah, yeah. I like opened it up when it was doing it and it was a freaking cow that was just like rubbing past our tent. Were there cows near you? Yes, there was an entire herd of cows <laughs> and a bunch of the other kids got in trouble for cow t- like going out and chasing the cows. Oh they, my okay, god. They were like chasing the So the, the cows, cows coming it's cow's revenge coming yeah. back to get get cow's get, revenge get back on third. your it's this like, is actually a true story. This it sounded far fetched, but that really did happen. That's hilarious. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. It was weird. But so are you? But so 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 back to our news report here. Are you a, a Bigfoot believer or a sas skeptic? Listen, I think it was probably one of two things. Oh, uh, here here's the thing. Don't don't look at my computer. Yeah, yeah, I okay. Look at my computer. I <laughs> here's the thing. I used to kind of be like, okay, probably. Yeah. But then. We were on a trip to Yellowstone, mm-hmm. and you saw there the was Yellowstone monster. There was a guy. There was a bear walking through the like field. Kay? Now the, the man or the the bee, the beast. There was a bear. There, there was, was just a bear. Like, it looked like a bear off in the distance. Yeah, yeah. The bear then stood up and started to do a dance. Uh and there was an entire line of people taking pictures of this bear whack. doing a dance, and it was a guy in a suit. Oh, and I will never forget that because he was like, if it happened today, he would have like dabbed and like flossed. That's fair, yeah. But like it was doing very... like Fortnite dances as a bear. <laughs> I have to ask Emily if that actually happened or if that was in my dreams. That, because that, I, I remember, that. I remember that vividly happened. So just like in front of everybody, to just like take off the mask. He was like, hey, everybody, it's if just he took me, the mask human off, man. But there was like. At a certain point, everyone realized, oh, this is just a guy. Everyone in a suit. stops watching and yeah. they're like, oh, well, it's not cool anymore because it's not real. Suit, yeah. Because <laughs> we were in Yellowstone for like a few days and didn't yeah. see any bears. And then that happened. Yeah. I, I personally, I feel like I am like a half skeptic. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a tick or I'm a skep. I'm either or, I'm but a I'm, not a, a I'm not a skeptic. Um, you want to be skep and I'll be tick? Yeah. What's up, skep? Hey, Wait, look, welcome, back, up, tick? welcome back to the podcast. You're on with skep and tick. Um, me personally, I feel like. I am like, out of all of the cryptids, Bigfoot is like one of the most likely that could technically exist because we have like, you know, bears, we have gorillas, we have chimpanzees and stuff like things that are similar to this. It is the most like humanoid, realistic thing, more realistic than I would argue, like, you know, the Mothman, who is probably my favorite cryptid. But in my brain, I'm like, that's probably not a real thing. It's kind of far fetched. He's a moth. I, and I would, a man. He's moth. And he's man. It, it's a moth. It's a man. No, it's no, it's it's super just, moth it's man. Just a guy. No, but like I, I'm the type that 
if if there were some solid evidence that came out, I would be like, well, yeah, I, I, I kind of, okay, I, yeah, I, I had a feeling, yeah. you know, I kind of like, knew that. It's like how I feel about there being aliens in the universe. Yeah, like they're definitely there. We just haven't seen it in yet. this ever expanding universe. It feels kind of naive to say wholeheartedly there is nothing yeah. else but us on this planet. It's like how dare I? like even fathom that how dare you why are we talking about aliens and bigfoot we are talking about aliens and bigfoot in this episode because we watched bigfoot Bigfoot versus versus the the illuminati Illuminati from 2020 and boy howdy was this movie a doozy it this the equivalent of watching this movie is like when you open a bag of cheetos Mm -hmm. and then at the bottom of the bag there's another bag of Cheetos that's like slightly worse. And then you open that it's like bag Beatles. of Cheetos. It's and the B level Cheetos. You keep like you keep like opening more and more bags of Cheetos until finally you get to like a moldy bag of Cheetos at the uh-huh. bottom of it. But then you realize that all nine bags of Cheetos are almost identical. And you wonder and if bought online. And you wonder if any of them were worth the time, no. the effort towards opening these bags to more disappointment. Especially, hoping maybe that ninth bag would give yeah. you something. And every Cheeto you had along the way was just like more and more stale and it tasted the same as the other Cheetos, but it wasn't like they forgot to put MSG in the batch, so it wasn't like as addicting as Cheetos normally are. It's but almost it like was almost there. It's like they took the same Cheeto and cloned it over and over yeah. again. So it was like the same exact Cheeto. So you were not getting really a new experience at all. Yeah, and, and it was like called a Cheeto, but Cheeto was like spelt wrong. So it wasn't like a normal Cheeto, but it was like a copy of a Cheeto. Exactly. You know a clo- what I mean? It, so it like felt familiar. Yeah, like like I've been here before, but yeah. it's not like a comforting thing. It's not no. like, oh good, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with this ca- this territory now. It's like, yeah. no, I, I've seen this now. Give me something new, please. I, I bought nine bags of Cheetos. And then in one of the bags, for some reason, there's there's like a Dorito and a pretzel. It's like a bag of munchies. There's a whole. It's like but, a Chex Mix up in there. And it's yeah. like, what are we but doing they're here? They're all like off brand. <laughs> so the movie was exactly <laughs> like that. Did that make any sense? <laughs> did that? Did that? Drag I'm gonna be guys? honest. That made so much sense to me. <laughs> Guys, we watched Bigfoot versus the Illuminati, which is the first, the first one, the first of nine in a movies. series of nine movies that are, I'll tell you right now, pretty much the same exact goddamn thing over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, and over again. so so we watched we watched this movie yesterday, yep. and then today when we were sitting down preparing to record, we actually went through and skipped through the other nine eight movies in the series. And mind you, I don't feel like we missed a lot by we skipping through them. I feel like I got just as much as I needed. <laughs> (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And it was interesting to see. It's kind of just a lot of the same, a lot of the the weirdness. And and we're going to go pretty deep into that. I feel like I'm glad we started with the top. You Mm -hmm. know, we started with the first one. Which was like unintentional, too. Like Emily was the one that suggested this one to us. And we were like, yeah, sure, we'll check it out. It happened to be number one of nine. Yeah, that was pretty lucky. We started at the foundation here. But it is worth mentioning. It is our very first animated movie that we've had for the podcast. If you could call it animated. I mean, in in some ways, it was there were no real people in it. It was all three D models animated in a certain way. I know, but it's just <laughs> it kind of makes you think. I'm like, there really aren't that many like horror animated movies, and I think we should no. definitely change that. Because because you know, animation is not for children. Animation is 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 cinema. You know, it's beautiful, as Guillermo del Toro will say. Because there's like, I mean, like Mad God was. Uh, well, blah, 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 stop motion. Yeah, exactly. I guess that's Does that that's, count. That's like the closest. That's one of the last ones that I've seen that was like a horror animated movie. The problem is, I feel like they're all like TV specials. Mm-hmm. You know, The Spine of Night is apparently a really good horror comedy. I mean, horror scary, horror, horror, horror scary horror animated. Scary, but I can't really find any other ones. So no. we okay to call this movie horror is something. It's Let's just a jump in. Stretch. <laughs> it's a stretch. Yeah. So so Rotten Tomatoes. Yes. Uh, doesn't have any reviews. <laughs> no, zero. No audience, no no critics, no nothing. We kind of we kind of broke some of our own rules. And I feel like the reason we did that is because we've decided that it's silly to have like strict rules. Yeah. And this is kind of our way of like breaking the bone, mm-hmm. so to speak, where we're like we're going to just pick movies that we feel fit the podcast. Exactly, you know right? There I mean? are some, and there are some movies that have been suggested to us that we're like, oh, well, it's rated really good. And people are like, how is that rated really good? That was yeah. terrible. And like, yeah. some people see things that they think that, that critics claimed really great, but yeah. then, then they're actually like, no, that movie was god awful. So I think it's, it's worth, it's worth our time to, to look into some of these movies and just and whatever catches our eye, some. you know, why not? It's interesting. Like, I was, I was, 
eager to check this one out. I was not necessarily excited. I didn't think it was going to be a good movie, but yeah. I was kind of like, let's see what we have in store here. Because by golly, this looks interesting to say the least. I was I was like trepidatious, trepid, trepid, trepidatious, trepidatiously <laughs> excited because uh, yeah, the the images. The images of this film looked interesting. Which there are not a lot of. It's actually kind of hard to find things no, about this movie. The internet wants to that. forget it exists. So there's a reason for but, that. We'll but so it. what is the umbrella that connects all of these movies together? Yeah, so I will, I'll go over that in a second. So the Rotten Tomatoes is sitting at zero. The audience is sitting at zero. <laughs> Letterboxd is at like 1.2. Ooh. IMDb is at a 1.9. Uh, the, there's no budget for this movie anywhere. You can literally find nothing on these movies. No, there's no um, Wikipedia page. No, no nothing really. There is a Wiki- exist. There is a Wikipedia page for one of the sequels called Trump versus the Illuminati. And that's... You heard me correctly. Yep. And uh-huh. I... I did not find any useful information on that one. I just thought it was funny that the only one with a Wikipedia page was the one about Trump. Of course. So that was great. Why wouldn't it? Goodness. And for the budget, I guess, I'm assuming they gave him some Doritos, maybe a Big Mac. Yeah. It, this was, was the budget for yeah, this film. Yeah, because it all had to be completely self-funded by this guy who made all of them. And and I'm assuming it grossed negatively. It has to be, right? So like a negative Big Mac. We're talking straight to Tubi, <laughs> free to watch. Make no profits whatsoever. All right, so let's delve into some of the information that I found out about Bigfoot versus the Illuminati. Get into it. This movie was conceived, so to speak, by a man named BC14. Tell me about this man. Now, BC14 is not his real name. No one, I can, as I can tell, actually knows his real name. It's actually like BC Farty or something like that. Not actually Farty, but you get what I mean. It's like BC something or whatever. <laughs> so BC, from what I can tell, is real. This man is a prolific man. He has written a ton. He has uh, directed a ton. And uh, not only movies, though, he's also done a bunch of books and uh, short films and just like all sorts of things under just like different name and umbrellas. What do you think BC even stands for? Bradley Cooper. For Christ. Oh. You think he, he takes the same naming conventions <laughs> as like, uh, as a, as I don't know, just throwing this out there, a clone of Van Helsing. So he's like the 14th BC. <laughs> there was BC1, <laughs> BC2. <laughs> This is I, this is the final. They, they got it right this time. This is the one that stuck. It's BC fourteen. So yeah, um, there are a couple other actual horror movies that he has made, like with real people in them, that I wouldn't mind going back and visiting. Oh, just, really? like in the future. You're telling me after watching his his one movie and then skimming through the other eight, you were like, I could check out more of this guy's stuff. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, like I I don't know if I want to watch any more of his animated films, but, but I am the, but curious. The real ones. I'm curious to see how he directs real people. Yeah. Instead of just directing uh what is it like what is that website where you go to to, to buy m- character models? <laughs> <laughs> sketch, stretch, sketch, sketch, sketch lab. Lab. Sketch. Sketch. Oh, there it is. Uh, sketch fab. Sketch fab. <laughs> see, I was I was I was almost there. Almost there. Uh so his real name is BC Fart. Dang it. Where did it <laughs> B- BC, BC Far- I just, what? I read it like 18 times. Fertney. Fertney. Okay. Fertney. And Wowzers. then he, I think he legally changed his name to BC 14. I mean, like Fertney's, it sounds like the the Swedish chef is saying Fertney. <laughs> Fertine. Fertney. Fertine. BC hey, Fertine. You're also Fertine. terrified of uh, BC. I mean, you're also terrified of Swedish chef. Do we got to get into all my phobias today? <laughs> yeah. So is it a Swedish thing? Like, are you scared of Swedish people? Or are you yeah. scared of... Like, yeah, I can eat like uh, like Italian meatballs. Those are fine. Give me Swedish meatballs, though. God, no. Do do not take me you, to an IKEA. Yeah, I was about to ask if you've ever been. To, to <laughs> never, IKEA. never have, never will. So you've got to admire BC fourteen a little bit because the amount of these movies he's popped out, like it is just insane. I'm just gonna kind go of ahead. staggering the number of these that exist. I'm going to just go ahead and read off a bunch of the movies that Mr. BC-14 has has, has done, because I think it's important. He has written 130. Holy shit. That is way more than I was expecting. 130 is what he's written. He's directed 30. I'm just going to talk about the ones he's written and directed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are more entertaining. Um, So it all started back with New Terminal Hotel in 2010. He also had a movie called like Flesh Prison or something, but I couldn't find anything on that one. Um. Then he went on to were- Werewolf Rising. Uh, uh, werewolf. Tre- were- 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 werewolf Rising, which is another movie with humans in with it. With real so old people in I'm it. I'm curious. I'm 
kind of sad we watched his animated movie. There's no way it could be that much better than I, what I want to see us. if it's the same cinematography where they're just standing there. You think they're talking. all set in space? Because that's oh, how this so. one is. <laughs> yeah. All of Bigfoot versus the Illuminati takes place in space. It's true. And then you got Trumpocalypse Now. You heard Trumpocalypse right. Now. Yeah, like Trump. And then you and got the, oh Uncivil War, Battle for America. Uh, you got Uncivil. <laughs> you got Freaky 14s. You got Manson and Dracula, Closer Than You Think. Now, can you tell me about that strand of films? Because there are yeah. a couple of Closer Than You Think ones. Yeah, so there's Manson and Dracula, there's Bundy and the Wolfman, and then upcoming, you've got Dahmer and Frankenstein. So wait, that Closer one's not even think. done? That one hasn't no, been released no, no. It comes yet? comes out this year, So dog. he's still doing this shit. Oh, yeah. Well, Bundy and Wolfman came out last year. I mean, so. it's, and it's basically just like documentaries comparing yeah. a serial killer with like a famous monster i was curious to what it what it was so we actually popped manson and dracula on for a little bit it is literally just like a poorly made video essay yeah just long that is on long tubi form video instead essay instead of on youtube and most of his stuff is on tubi right like you can kind of check out most of this shit for free over there oh yeah all of his stuff is on tubi and we will yeah <laughs> so Tubi, for those of you who don't know, I'm pretty sure it was made by Hulu, right? Was uh, it Hulu? Could, could be. No, Fox. Fox. Fox, yeah. Owned so, by Fox Corporation since Fox Corporation create, created Tubi to basically, to be or not to be, oh. a like free streaming service, essentially capitalizing on ads. And so they would take things that like aren't super expensive and put them on and then you know, the ads are what give them revenue. Funny enough, there are a decent amount of movies that we watch for this podcast that you can find on Tubi. Well, and there's good movies on Tubi, too. There are some good ones, yeah. It's it's not all all garbage, but from what I can tell, it's fairly easy to put something on Tubi. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't actually cost that much money. Right, and also, like, you know, watching them, you come at the risk of, like, watching a bunch of ads with it, right? That's kind of the cost of it. It's like, fine, you can watch this movie for free, but you gotta go through a bunch of ads. Yeah, so... Basically, the common theory on the internet about BC-14 is he creates these really easy-to-make movies that are like an hour and 20 minutes long each, and then uploads them to Tubi and calls it a day. Yep. So when you watch the movie, maybe you watch one of the nine, you don't realize the similarities between them, mm -hmm. and so you kind of just move on with your life, you don't think anything of it, and then you've made a lot of money. <laughs> so like BC-14... Gotta hand it to you, man. Mm -hmm. Kind of a great like idea. It really just feels like he helps like, a little scammy. It just felt like he filled out Tubi's catalog, right? Like when they come up with a streaming service, like we need to have a bunch of stuff yeah. to lay out the groundwork, right? Because like if you dig deep enough in any streaming platform, be it Netflix, Hulu, Max, Disney Plus, you uh, go you go deep. There are some weird things living in the depths of that. He's, he's not that the just, only one that just fill it up. Just to make it seem like there's a lot to stream on there. And of yeah. course, they they advertise the big names, you know, the really popular projects and stuff like that. But there's a lot of crap that goes on in these things. And there I feel are. like he's one of those guys that is laying out like the foundation of Tubi just so they have that to fall back on mm -hmm. if they don't get a bunch of like really good movies to watch. So I found a Reddit thread and, and it's really like he keeps to himself. He does not. A lot of people are talking about he this. These movies are kind of hidden. This elusive I mean, man. The only secret private life. The only reason we found out about it at all was because it was like in, in one of the pop-ups on my TV that was like, hey, watch this movie. You're interested in bad yeah, movies. Check this out. Why not? We've talked about that before, how that we watched so much bad movie. <laughs> the algorithm knows Sorry, no now. bad movies. No bad but movies. But like poorly rated movies. Yes. And so, so now I, it suggests them to us, like Bigfoot versus the Illuminati. So I found this Reddit thread where basically someone was like, please explain BC-14 to me. Which is so funny. In our movies, you know the guy posted this one. And the best part about this is that BC-14 himself commented on the this. The man, the myth, the legend, BC-14. Which I'm sure he has like a Google alerts set up for any time anyone talks about him. Yeah, exactly. Like he's I probably, would totally do that if I was famous. He's probably going to get alerted about this podcast for sure. That would be awesome. That'd and be if hilarious. you are listening to this, I would love to talk to you. Maybe even have you on. Let's you are you chat. are incredible. I, I I need to talk to you. So please, BC, we need to pick reach your out brain. to us on any of our social medias. <laughs> uh, here's my personal phone number. Give me a call. No, I'm just kidding. No, really though. Like I really do admire the man for like his commitment to yes. it. Like we're probably gonna talk shit on on your movie. Probably definitely. I think you understand that that's Okay. But there is something like very respectable. I think we've mentioned this in the past about how like 
it's it's tough to to kind of put yourself out there to release things, make content, put it out there for the world to sit and laugh at, like we kind of will in a second. Yeah, but like he's doing it because like the thing is, I don't have any movies on Tubi. No. You know, no. like he's got that above me. I could not be doing the things that he's doing. So like I gotta hand it to you for like doing this and doing it so much, so yeah. often, so frequently with such conviction. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Anyway, he responded to some of the claims that like it was using AI, that kind of stuff. And it was actually completely done without AI. Um, if what he's saying on here about four months ago is true, he has never used AI for his movies. He writes it all himself. He quote unquote animates it himself. <laughs> um, but he says, not AI. Uh, going over anyone's head is not my intention. Bigfoot sci-fi universe is meant to have fun. You may find lots of Easter eggs in the dialogue. Best served with your beverage of choice is and not right? to be taken too seriously. Easter, Thanks for watching. Easter eggs in the dialogue. What on earth could he mean about that? <laughs> I don't know. But then it goes on and... Uh, they ask what like the order of movies is, so we actually have a specific order. So I'll go through that right now. Your first film is Bigfoot versus the Illuminati, obviously. This is, gives the crux of the apocalypse backstory that runs throughout. Then Bigfoot versus Megalodon is the second. Then you got Bigfoot versus Krampus. Then you have Tickles the Clown and Trump versus the Illuminati. Those ones are kind of outliers. They sit out there, but they involve all of the same stories. And you would think these all do not connect in some way. Like at first, like, okay, Bigfoot. Then you got Bigfoot again. It's like, okay, so we're, we're, we have a running Bigfoot theme. Then they kind of stray from that. They are all connected. Bigfoot is in pretty much all of them. Yeah, like, oh, so despite what you may think, they do connect and it's... Why? And they're all in space. They're all and then in space. Tickles the clown and Trump versus the Illuminati. You're like, there's no way those are connected. No, they're definitely they're are. in space. They the first work. shot in Tickles the Clown was like Tickles the Clown in a spaceship. Yep. So, you know, explain that to me, Lord. atheist. Explain that to me, atheist. How'd you get a clown up in space? How'd you do it? I want to know the secret. I'm trying to get my buddy Bobo up to space. He loves he loves <laughs> space and the stars, and I need to get him up there right away. So then number six, you have Van Helsing. Then you have Exterminator and the AI Apocalypse, which is the only one we didn't watch. No, yeah, we didn't check that one out. Oops, messed up. Start over. And then Bigfoot versus Megalodon 2, my personal favorite. And then Bigfoot. Oh, you have a favorite? Yeah, because that one had the pumpkin head guy. It was cool. That's true, yeah. And then Bigfoot Goes to Hell is number nine. Wow. And then he wow. himself says, if you're batshit enough to take the ride, cheers. <laughs> so, like, even <sighs> he is aware that what he's putting out is like this. Yeah. And I guess that's kind of to own it, you know, to know exactly what you're putting out there in the world so you can't be surprised when people react a certain way to it. <laughs> the guy, the original poster said, you made my day. I'm going to grab a six pack and strap in for the weekend. And then BC commented one last time and said, you're going to need a bigger case of beer. Enjoy. Lord. So yeah, he is 100% aware. on his own stuff. He is 100% aware. BC, I need to talk to you. We Let's be must friends. Must chat. Please, BC. <laughs> Our people will talk to your people. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's pretty much that's pretty much what we know. Mm -hmm. So the big theory is the whole Tubi thing. Uh, there was another podcast. Uh, it was No Effort Films. They they went into it a little bit deeper, just on BC alone. Mm -hmm. And from what I can tell, they just watched all thirty movies and then and then just why you know just kind of just about made one big melting pot about them, which we could have done and we kind of will do with the uh, with the 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 eight other ones we skimmed through. Just kind of yeah. mention things that go on in those ones, but because there are reoccurring characters and plot lines and yeah. the whole mess of stuff. I just I can't. I can't, man. <laughs> I, truly, though, it's 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 just messy. It's so messy. So, BC, if you're out there, I love you. <laughs> don't talk to don't us. stop doing what you're doing, Derek. Uh, what's uh, what's that little drink you got there? What oh you drinking? God, Bilbo bartender is you. Can, are you Bilbo? Invoking? Bilbo. Bilbo. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is me, gentlemen. Bilbo bartender. <laughs> Welcome out of the podcast, Bilbo bartender. Tell us Thank about this you. lovely drink you made I like for us today. today. You're being a talk show host. It's very fun. It's very fun. Welcome on. Welcome mm. on to the show. <laughs> well, listen, I, like it's 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 hard running the shit by myself. Derek got fired, and I've the That's high true. horse keeps building boxes and now he's too high up in the air i can't even hear what he's saying here is my resume if you would like someone else to take Derek's spot it's um it's just a piece of paper soaked in alcohol <laughs> don't light it on fire <laughs> i'm just gonna put this in the trash <laughs> can <laughs> it was flash paper it was all a joke <laughs> I'm a, I'm a did magician. he used to be a magician maybe okay hello my name is pen and teller <laughs> Pen and Teller, you're both. I'm two of them. I don't talk, and I'm very big. 
Pen. But then I ate a bunch of potatoes, and now I'm skinny. First name Pen, middle name and last name Teller. It's yeah. just N, actually. Do you know that was true? That's true? What I said. No. The, Is that the, for real? The Pen, yeah, that he... That he he was really big, yeah, and then he was gonna die, so he went on like a strict baked potato diet and lost a bunch of weight. What the hell? <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> Bilbo bartender, yes. <laughs> um, today you're drinking what I call the Illuminati's fuzzy navel. <laughs> now, um, it's it's um it's a it's a glass here that has like a tin foil hat. Is that is that aluminum aluminum foil? Aluminum. Naughty. Aluminum naughty. Oh, that's <laughs> you're so naughty, aluminum. <laughs> yes. So the hat believes in all sorts of conspiracy theories and Bigfoot, which is why he's a little fuzzy. You know, Emily had a much better suggestion where she said we put a light under it and like illuminate, il- illuminate it. Illuminate it. Just wanted to give her credit for the much better idea. <laughs> I'm offended, but it's okay. Uh, but I also anyway, like aluminum naughty. It's aluminum. <laughs> this is nowhere. This is Bigfoot versus How do the we aluminum still have a naughty. Podcast? <laughs> This is the bullshit we're doing. Because we have fun here, Bilbo. <laughs> Don't you understand? You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> It'll be fun being your new co-host. <laughs> did, I, did I make it in time? Hey, guys, God aluminum naughty. Alu- <sighs> that was pretty good. Like, aluminum. The, uh, like aluminum. Like, like, um, like foil. Like aluminum. We already made that joke, Puny Punter. Go home. Fuck. God. <laughs> Damn it. A bing? Shit. God, I've never been good at anything. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I didn't know you guys were going to... Didn't know we were going to record so soon. Aluminum. Not... Wow. He's lost it. Anyway, I will now take... just keeled over dead. I'm going to take the heart of Puny Punner and put it in this drink. Oh, Lord. Squishy, swish, swish. (laughs) Why does it look like a a plastic, like a squeaky toy? (laughs) It was. Anyway, this is basically just a fuzzy (laughs) navel with some jokes. (laughs) Soupy twists. Fuzzy navel with some jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I dig the little uh, the little aluminum uh, hat that we have on our little yeah, drinks. I, like there too. I normally he would go into it, but that bit ran way too long. Oh yeah, so that was like the equivalent of when an improv game is running too long and they start flashing the lights. Yeah, exactly. I get it. I get it. I know. It's like we're listen gi- when you're giving a speech at the video game awards and they cut you off with the music too quick. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> this is the worst. So, do you have any more uh, behind the camera info Dude, for I us? I wish I did. Yeah, that's. I really wish I did, fellas. Man. It's 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 t- it's brutal out here for sure. This movie, just like that one girl, it has it has a it has Daisy Eilish. It is simultaneously so much <laughs> and so little for us to get into. I mean, do we dare we dare we get into our expectations? I is it time? Just, I think we do i think I, we just start uh, <laughs> yeah is that how you're uh, feeling see this is why i'm like are you sure you want to watch more of his movies because this movie like drained you of life I essence don't know if i'm human anymore <laughs> but it was just the animated one i'm really curious to how the like the human movie you've work. got high high hopes you think you think maybe this this will i work. got high horse i, I was gonna got say it's gonna be like high horse's favorite I song got high <laughs> apple pie so so me going into this movie expectations i was thinking it's gonna be fun no matter what i did not think it was going to be a very good movie but i was like there's a high chance this is one of those outrageously crazy movies that i will laugh at it the whole time and have fun for that reason so i yeah. said no matter what it will be funny my my overall expectation was basically just like I'll laugh, yeah. So it was basically the same as yours. Same deal, right? Uh, my first formal expectation for this was just a laugh out loud fest. I was really, really going along with my general expectation, just like expecting to laugh at this movie. Definitely not with this movie. Yeah. <laughs> my first expectation was horrible animation, just Ooh. absolutely horrible. One hundred percent. We did watch the trailer for this one, and that's basically what we got from yeah. that trailer, right? Absolutely. Uh, my second one just said more sci fi than horror, like. A lot of we checked a couple places. It's everywhere said it was a horror animation movie. So we're like, okay, we'll take your word on it. But the animation made it all look like it was set in like, you know, Mass Effect, like yeah. space shuttles, and like didn't see a lot of horror things beyond a Bigfoot's monster. We also knew that uh, Van Helsing was going to be a character in it. Yep. So like, that's basically all I got. But like, definitely more sci fi than it would ever be horror. That's the, her- that's the whole thing. Uh, some of the worst writing ever seen on this podcast and we've not, seen some writing f- uh, folks and not necessarily the worst but like the most lazy yes absolutely uh, i said uh bigfoot will speak but very sparingly i was expecting kind of like a um like a winnie the pooh blood and honey thing where like you would get like one line at the very very end 
Or I was thinking maybe you would talk kind of like a Neanderthal caveman kind of thing. Very broken English, not talking a ton. Yeah. Uh, every character they can think of is going to be shoved into this story. Oh, yeah. Uh, voice actors trying their best. They probably didn't know. Because, uh, fun fact, Derek was was doing a voice acting stunt for a bit. He's a great voice actor. And he actually did a project for, for, oh. for, a, yeah, for a little YouTube thing. Oh, I see thing. what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. No, no jokes for real, for real, real. Yeah, no, I actually did. I did a project and... I didn't know that it released. Yeah. And then it was like three or four months later, I Googled it just because I was like, oh, I did that project forever ago. Never heard anything about it. Saw it on there. There it was. Just like chilling, having yep. a great time. And you can check it out. And... No, no, I'm not going <laughs> to. Check, check it out somewhere. Maybe I'll, maybe ask me after the show. I'll tell you what yeah. it is. But um, what's funny is that, you know, Derek felt however he felt about it. But like he had no idea what that finished product was going to be. This was all done online. Just like putting in yeah. for like an ad for voice actors needed. Right. So like you just did a job. Listing, I literally. Right? Yeah, I did a job posting. I got paid like 20 bucks. Yeah. I just recorded a couple lines. And then thing is like you gave a song it, and you, then... you, you tried right you're like i'm gonna be a voice actor like you did you did the thing right you had yeah. no idea what the end product would be like yeah. i feel like that is definitely what this movie like was probably that's what i was expecting from this movie i'm like i'm sure these voice actors are trying their best how could they know what this movie was going to end yeah. up being right it was probably like there's casting call club is a website where people can go like freelance anyone to do their voice acting you basically just audition and stuff yeah, i yeah. did a few projects on there we and need to keep an eye on that website to see if bc14 yeah. ever says anything yeah man i will be in the next bc14 movie me too <laughs> me too yeah bc dude call us let's I will, talk i'll do it for free we'll act in your i movie. will be in your movie we can do the voices we can i can do the voices of everything in your movie that is no joke the way a character sounds in this movie that we will get to yeah, cool. <laughs> uh what's your your next expectation uh barely worth watching for the podcast <laughs> So, so real. You're so real for that one. <laughs> um, and then I, my last expectation was, quote, the PlayStation can produce mind-boggling effects. Have you, ever, ah. have you ever seen this image? It's like an ad from a magazine that was advertising, like the, I think, the first PlayStation. Yeah. And literally directly under this picture, it says the PlayStation can produce mind-boggling effects. It is a picture of like two rendered skeletons holding a sword and a shield. I love that picture. And they're, I, love the I love them. But it's so funny to think like mind-boggling effects. It's just some skeletons. Hey, my birthday's coming up. Will you please for the love of god frame that yes absolutely like, with the text and everything absolutely i want that on my wall. no problem we can make that happen but so like that's that's kind of a funny thing now with the graphics we have in today's world so like that's kind of what i was expecting is like really like bad graphics compared to what we see these days especially yeah. this movie was only released four years ago 2020 yeah. oh my god. so yeah the, the effects i mean so, along with what you said right just bad animation bad graphics yeah uh voice acting will be so rough just you know we've talked about that <laughs> mm-hmm it's yeah. gonna be rough. We basically just bounced around the same couple of ideas off of each we other really for did. our expectations here. So, Derek, you have done us a great service here. You have put in the work, you dug around in the mines, you know, you put on your little miner's hat with a little light on it, went into the internet archives, and you found where to get the script for this movie. Is that so right? I didn't find the script, but I did find the subtitles. The subtitles. And that is his like the auto generated subtitles. I don't know if these are auto generated or not. We will and find out. And by reading them, it didn't help me understand if they were like some of the words in this movie were so far fetched. Yes. I don't know if they were auto generated or not. It's so crazy that it's like I don't know. This could have been auto generated or some crazy man named BC fourteen wrote them. So so to get us started in this movie proper, will you please give us the opening narration? Yeah, dude. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do it as bad. Do it, yeah. I'll ba- I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the mic. I'll back you up. In the year 2044, advanced artificial intelligence robots drained the Earth of her natural resources, leaving the once thriving planet a barren shell, incapable of sustaining life. I'm doing it too good. From a global population that at once approached 8 billion, only a few thousand humans survived by going underground and eventually abandoning the Earth altogether. For outer space! In space, a rebel alliance formed, eventually led by the last survival of her fam- survivor of her family, Princess Kali Divine. I don't want to keep this is really long. Dude. It's a long. So basically, it's a long narration. Basically, you got Princess Callie Divine and her royal family, and then there's then there's you know the enemies led by Alistair Crowley. Yeah, Derek, will you just give me like because I forget we didn't do this quite accurately. This is going to be terrible for you listeners. Will you just get like directly on top of the microphone to say one of these lines? Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Brace yourselves. <laughs> 
no, in no, the year no, 2044. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was more so that in that, the year 2024. Yeah. Uh, oh, the I'm I'm experiencing this and it's unlistenable. <laughs> no, but so like ju- that is just to give you a taste of the of the acting, like the the mic, the sound quality of pretty much every actor in this movie. All of them were just like so close to the microphone; it was yeah. unbearable. Well, it's like it's like the opposite of Alien. You know, in space, no one can hear you scream. <laughs> in space, everyone, everyone can, can hear, hear you scream. scream. <laughs> I. Okay, here's the thing. I think it was one of these situations where he got all of these people on like Casting Call Club or something. Definitely like recorded separately. Yeah, because they all had different mic quality. Yes. So it's so obvious. The sound they quality all... was all over the place. There were some characters in this that sounded like this. Like they were recording really far away. And then there or, were like, some that were right really, here. really close. Like really, really close. Uh-huh. Or like, I'm clicking on my phone to record these yeah. lines. Yeah. It's it's just a mess. So yeah, basically all you need to know it's the year twenty forty four. Earth is incapable of sustaining life. AI has stripped Earth of all of its resources, which makes sense because AI needs fuel. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, you'd imagine AI would be the bad guys. No, not really. Instead, we have a, a rebel alliance that has formed in space. Princess Kali is their leader, um, and there are aliens. They are the Illuminati, known as the Archons, and they are dedicated to or wiping... Archons, depending on which character. <laughs> yeah, there is one character that continuously says Archons, which again leads me to believe they recorded these separately. Absolutely. Because if there was a director in the room, say, "Hey, that's Archons, not Archons." Sorry, um, but but so so they are here. They are the Illuminati. These Archon aliens. They are the bad guys. AI is no longer a part of the story whatsoever. It just nah, dude. a reason to get them off of Earth, I guess, because it it it, it killed all of the resources yep. there. Really, you have no idea. <laughs> so so far, animation really really bad. It looks like yeah. you could make this movie in like G mod. <laughs> oh, absolutely. This so it looks like Forge mode in Halo Three. Oh or yeah. Was it Halo Four? One of the Halos started for. Oh no, it was Reach. Yeah, yeah. It, where like you could go in and just like mess around and edit things it literally feels like red versus blue yes. or something like that where absolutely. like absolutely so we'll just get into this now i i did some some looking into these models of characters oh yeah so i went on to a little place called sketch fab and which this is, is what we discovered today on our like rewatch of like the other movies yeah you can find a good majority of these models that they were used in this movie without, on sketch fab without much digging i swear derek no. looked up bigfoot and like the third model yeah was the one that they used for the movie and i couldn't find them all but like they all just felt like very generic like aliens and very generic like soldiers in space yes, right so i was like basic assets there's no way they modeled these for this and so for those of you who don't know sketchfab is like a open source you can create 3d models and put them on there you can sell them to people and like sell animations and stuff so it literally feels like he just bought these models put them into some sort of animation software yep. moved them around a little bit and that's 90 percent of this movie that is where the entire budget went for this movie because like for one of these i mean like the bigfoot model cost like 25 bucks yeah, to dude. get that guy that's like that's like five big macs there's a dragon they use in a later movie that was like 35 that's bucks 35. you know like that's 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 a lot of big macs that yeah, you dude. could buy for that much money <laughs> one digital dragon is worth like 12 big macs. i will raise one digital dragon for three bigfoots <laughs> I only have four Big Macs. No, no, you get one digital dragon. Okay. But I take off two wings. No, (laughs) my dragon is a lizard now. He's cute. (laughs) He's kind of cute. I like him. I'm going to name him Reggie. Reggie. This is Reggie, the the (laughs) non-dragon. This is nothing. This whole thing feels like a very long video game cutscene. Like just oh yeah, but like a poorly made, very poorly made one. So the Rebel Alliance is losing this fight against the alien Archons. So they need to call in some reinforcements. So they're they're trying to find some help. Meanwhile, leader of the Archons, his name is Wrathchild, is also trying to get some reinforcements for them. He goes to goddamn Anubis. You know him, Egyptian god of death. Yeah, that 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 that, that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Anubis, who's just chilling in a sarcophagus in some like Egyptian tomb somewhere and he's just like hey we really need your help like I'm like what already I'm like what is going on here I don't know, what dude. planet is this on because there it's 
this movie does a lot of talking about things and never showing them. It's just like, I'm going to go see Anubis now. Here I am at Anubis now. Like, there's no, how did you get there? What planet did you go to? It's just so insane. This movie really wants to be like a horror comedy really bad, too. It feels like oh, yeah. YouTube bullshit, red versus blue. It felt kind like kind of like YouTube poop, too, like for those of you who are in the know. Yes, yes. So, um... The Wrathchild comes to Anubis and asks him to resurrect the uh, Alistair Crowley, you know? Yeah, the, the famous author. <laughs> <laughs> the um, so, so Alistair Crowley is here now, and he is the worst. He's just an annoying alien that talks about getting blowjobs. Like, he is just raunchy and sexed up and nasty. For those, you, for those of you who don't know who Alistair Crowley was, he was an English occultist, philosopher, ceremonial magician, poet, painter, novelist, and mountaineer. He founded the religion of Thelemia, identifying himself as the prophet, entrusted with guiding humanity into the Aeon of Horus in the early 20th century. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Or if you've ever watched Good Omens, you know, you know, uh, David Tennant's character. No, they're very different. They're very different. <laughs> Nothing like each other at all. Don't, don't, Go watch Good Omens instead. Don't bother your time. We did it for you. <laughs> don't don't date that but, character. But he is actually unbearable in this movie. So so Crowley has been reincarnated into the body of an Archon alien thanks to the help of Anubis. There's oh. a bit where he's talking about how, like, oh, it's been three thousand years. Do you want to do the, the Crowley voice for it? <laughs> Okay, yeah. Hold on. Oh, because because there is specifically a line that he says that I'm like, this character is just untenable. I can't find I the can't. blowjob line. I hate him. <laughs> it was even one of the reviews we looked at beforehand. Oh, by the way, before we get too deep, I there was one review because there weren't any like actual uh, Rotten Tomatoes reviews. While Derek's finding this, there was one review I found on IMDb, actually, that I thought was really funny. So the the, the headline for this one says... Pretty horrible, but in an amazing way. Nice way to kill an hour. Wa <laughs> nice way to kill an hour waiting for my KY jelly to arrive from Amazon. I'm too embarrassed buying jelly at the store. All the clerks know I like sticking things where the sun doesn't shine, which is why I like this movie so much. But in all honesty, this movie was god awful. <laughs> They use this what? review to talk about killing time while they waited for their KY jelly to be delivered oh my to them. God, <laughs> you know me sitting down for a horror movie. I got my popcorn in one hand. I got my KY jelly in the other. One. <laughs> That's what you eat with your just, popcorn. Just don't cross the streams. Things get real messy there. <laughs> you also forgot at the end of the conversation with Crowley and Anubis. Uh huh. He says, "I just had a liver burst sandwich. Is it on my breath?" Oh. My. Then Anubis gets mad. And then Rathchild's just like, gotcha. Anubis is probably the only one in this movie that makes a lot of sense and is like, you guys are all fucking idiots this whole time. I'm Alistair Crowley. And I, is that right? That's like, right, yeah. I'm Alistair Crowley. And I've never grown out of that infantile belief that the universe was made for me to suck. Speaking of, if the date on this screen is correct, I haven't had a blowjob in 3,000 years. Oh Who's going to suck my dick with me looking like this? Don't fret, Alistair. I'll find a deserted archon who gives great head. We'll get you straightened out. The universe? <laughs> just that's just a taste of the of the kind of characters we are meeting in this movie. Because God, it is it is just so rough. You want to do war? I'd prefer if you tweak my nipples. Oh, stop! Oh, it's so bad. I hated Alistair so much in this movie. Um, but Van Helsing is here, by the way. Master Chief Van Helsing is here. <laughs> he literally looks exactly like Master Chief. He's like Master Chief, Mass Effect, Dead Space, all had a baby. It's just like the most generalized version of like spaceship protagonist in a video game. That is what he looks like. But but yeah, so he, he's Van Helsing? How does that work exactly? He's a clone. <laughs> he, so back on Earth, he signed up for one of those... He says online ancestry kits, which I guess means he was <laughs> created in a lab using archived DNA of the real Van Helsing. So Pretty he smart, has Van honestly. Helsing skills. So he's not Van Helsing proper. He is a clone of Van Helsing. One of many, actually. There, are, there were many more before didn't him. Didn't he say his name was like Jack Van Helsing? Yeah, Jack Van Helsing. <laughs> they just call him VH it's for this me. movie. Which, why? Well, they did that. It, in in, in uh, Bigfoot versus Trump, of or course. Trump versus the Illuminati, they called oh, Trump call him DJ. DJ. Yeah, <laughs> Donald J. Trump. Hey, DJ. God, that's just. Oh, I hated that one so. Much. Anyway, 
So they're just doing a lot of talking and not actually doing anything. It's just every single shot you see a person in, they're either in a spaceship flying somewhere or they're in front of some like space command console that they can like have uh, like guarding the front of them. If you're if you're a video game prolific, you you will recognize everything in this movie as like an old cutscene from like a Bioware or a Bethesda game. Yes, because they literally are just standing there doing some sort of idle animation reciting their dialogue like if you've ever played oblivion or watched any of the just look up like on youtube look up oblivion dialogue and and tons of like parodies of it come up because it's like a person just staring directly into the center of the camera slightly moving their body occasionally and reciting a line and that was this entire movie I really like to imagine BC14 was a former employee at BioWare <laughs> who gets canned and their boss comes in like, yeah, so BC, uh, we're going to need to have a chat about this. So we got those new cutscenes that you animated for us. And um, I thought we talked about this, man. We can't have Bigfoot up in the mix here. He, he does he, he does not further the plot. I don't I don't think Bigfoot could exist in space. I don't think he's real to begin with myself. I'm a sash skeptic. You know I'm me. a skeptic. <laughs> You're not a footologist? <laughs> no, I'm actually a potophobe. Thank you. I'm, I'm a known potophobe. Thank you. For, I'm, I'm, I, please, I'm very sensitive about that. I'd like for you to not. Yeah, in fact, take your feet off the desk there, please. Uh, but we're going to have to can you effective immediately, you know. And not even, not even Alistair Crowley could save you in these, this situation. Ah, but I tweaked his nipples. <laughs> I tweaked his nipples so good. Please. <laughs> I gave him his first blowjob in 3,001 years. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, uh, we got the review on that one. It was uh, quite disappointing, actually. So we're going to have to have it. I didn't know, how to, on I didn't know how to suck on a, on a little what, e- alien wangle dangle. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> I didn't know how to suck. Alien wangle dangle. <laughs> So BC-14 canonically worked at Bioware now. That, that makes sense. According to us and our lore. I mean, I did fall down a, a rabbit hole of a couple comments. <laughs> I mean, not really a rabbit hole. But people, like, theorizing that BC-14 is Bigfoot. Really? And, and this is... Now, that's a whole turn of events. <laughs> Hold on. Bigfoot... <laughs> so Bigfoot not only exists, likes to make movies, and is pro-Trump, apparently. <laughs> I can't There's... tell if he's pro-Trump. I can't either. Because... I was gonna... That was my biggest curiosity when there was Trump versus the Illuminati. I'm like, are they going to make him like the hero of this story? It... Kind but I don't know. And also, like it, but not. This is definitely like, this is a terrible decision on them. It's not Trump proper because no. Van Helsing is a clone, right? In the credits, he is credited as Trump's Chinese clone. Yeah. And that has a lot of issues for a lot of reasons. Yeah, but so I don't that. know if it's necessarily pro Trump. We didn't look deep enough into it because I can't yeah, I personally tell, stand the man. I so. couldn't tell if it was Prump. <laughs> Prump. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is not prump. They got to put those labels on the bottom of DVDs never, now. I will never be prump. I will never be prump. You will never catch. This is a prump-free podcast. That's honestly, a, that's I think a guarantee. When we started this. We were like, we're never going to talk about Trump <laughs> ever. Just, just no. It's bad. We don't want anything to do with it. Um, Doctor Jekyll is here too, by the way. Yeah, yeah, he's here. He wasn't hiding. No, he, he was not hiding. There Famous is, composer. <laughs> there is an assistant to Doctor to Doctor Jekyll who is never mentioned by name, but it does seem like kind of like it's an evil Hyde. version of himself. So, like, it seems like Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde have been split into two in this lab that they work in. But Doctor Jekyll is like he's lobotomizing aliens that they've kidnapped and trying to turn them into double agents to like infiltrate the Ar- Archon ranks. Which doesn't go anywhere. It's just a plot line that they decided to throw in there for no reason. Bloody lobotomy technique seems to be violently expelling the bowels of our captured Archon fighters. And yet they remain fully conscious, unaware of anything happening to them, but unwilling to do a thing about it. Oh my god. And then what's, uh, what's no, I don't even want to get into the, no, uh, the, the, the Hyde character says something gross afterwards. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Shall I euthanize the past subjects now, Dr. Jekyll? So you can start with the new prisoners. He's just Have like the you evil given version. any more uh, consideration to my sex slave idea. Oh my god! Sex, sex, sex. Is that all you think about? This movie is way too horny for absolutely no reason. And where the fuck is Bigfoot? We've been in this movie for like fifteen, maybe twenty minutes at this point. Like yeah. we're probably of like, an hour and twenty long movie. Yeah, we're probably like 10, 15 minutes right now. But like, still no Bigfoot. Not even any mention of Bigfoot. Yeah. Um. So there's there's a pretty quick scene where we see the princess Callie has an alien queen, Varuna. She's from she's an Atlantean queen, I think. And so I guess not all aliens are bad. It's good to know that you have some alliances going on here. Oh my god, man! What's up? What's I, up? I fucking god. Oh no. What have you come across? I just kept reading this dialogue. I forgot about it. Uh-huh. Sex, sex, sex. Is that all you think about? What's wrong with the cadavers you've been using? They're good for nothing else. Mm-hmm. You don't even have sexual organs. 
What the hell? So there's a lot of implications. Yeah, in hold that on. Paragraph. What is what is Doctor Jekyll's assistant rocking down there? Then? I don't know. I he's don't like know a Ken doing. doll. He's smooth. I don't know. <laughs> Gross. It's terrible. So yeah, we see an Atlantean queen, Varuna, is joining a space battle alongside a uh, princess, Callie. Right, and then we basically just see a scene of spaceship battles trying way too hard to be cool and failing. And pretty quickly, uh, that queen, Queen Varuna, the alien, died in battle. And it's not like a big climactic thing. We just see no! a spaceship fly, and then it explodes. Now, keep in mind, you see this scene specifically ex- the, the exact scene of two missiles coming uh-huh. out of the ship, hitting something like eight times. And this is not the first time we've seen this. Already in this movie, we are seeing the same shots, the same scenes recycled just with different dialogue over the top of it. None, and I mean none of these human characters have their faces exposed, so you can't see their faces animated within it. And I honestly think that's just so he can recycle and reuse the same shots over Absolutely and over Absolutely, that's it. Yeah, yeah. that has no, to be the reason, course. right? I mean, it's pretty, again, it's pretty genius. I think if we were to chalk, the, like, if I had all the time in the world mm-hmm. and and no life, I would like sit down and edit this movie to see how much was like the same shot yep. over and over and over. Anytime a shot is reused, you cut it. Because if you could edit this movie down to only the one shot one time instead of reusing any shots, I think you'd have like a 10 minute I think movie. it'd be like 12 minutes long. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, on the on the Allies headquarters, they have this this robot who's like a killing machine known as the Executioner as the prisoner. Yeah. They're hoping he looks like the Terminator. <laughs> yes, definitely. They were hoping to like reprogram it and turn it against the Archons, because I guess it is currently allied with the Archons. Its sole purpose in life is to destroy humans. And it's kind of weird. They just, they there's a scene where VH, Van Helsing, is in a room with him right in front of him, and the robot executioner is just talking about, I will kill you. I will, you know, splay the wall with your entrails. He's standing right in front of him. What is stopping him from what? killing just him right it. now? He's this just big it. killing machine. Again, this movie is a lot of talk without actually delivering anything ever. Yeah. So now, about 20 minutes into the movie, VH, Van Helsing, Helsing says he's got an old friend. He's kind of elusive, but he's a war machine. Yeah, dude. And just like that, the next shot, the next cut scene, he's just on some abandoned planet and Bigfoot's right in front of him. Yeah, dude. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah, I guess we're just going to, I'll just go along with that, I guess. And uh, Derek, was I right in my expectation that Bigfoot speaks sparingly? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely no, goddamn not. not. Bigfoot talks way, way more than I was expecting. And he's kind of sassy. He's definitely got like a sailor's mouth, too. He's. He- He's, he's, a, he's a naughty boy. He's Illuminati. He's Illuminati. Bigfoot is Illuminati. <laughs> I don't know how to even describe Bigfoot, man. He's like Louis Armstrong's lost cousin. He sounds like he's trying to do an awful impression of Louis Armstrong. That at times definitely sounds a bit racist. Yeah, and I, I was gonna like I was thinking if we by law would be able to do this voice, and I don't think we I don't can. Think we should just imagine a bad Louis Armstrong impression, and that's, that's basically borderline all you offensive, need. And, and that's it. Yeah, imagine a voice that kind of sounds like VH, because guess what? They're the same exact voice actor. <laughs> Again, cutting costs anywhere they can, just use the same voice actor that for voice multiple actor things. Is like eight characters. It's pretty wild. Um, but Bigfoot is down to help the allies just because he enjoys killing archons. He's kind of a he's kind of a he's kind of a, a gnarly dude. He's like, yeah, man, I'll, I'd like to crush yeah. some uh, some some archon skulls under my foot. You know, let's do it. They don't really have much of a history with each other. The only thing is that VH goes up to Bigfoot. He's like, it's me, Van Helsing. He's like, Van Helsing, I hate that dude. He's like, no, 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 I'm the clone. Remember we were in that saloon one time and yeah, I helped you in that yeah, fight? Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, my man. It's like, so that's all it takes for you to be cool with this guy is yeah, the fact that he helped you in a bar fight one time. That's it. That's all it takes. Um, so... Just the voice actor is Marco Guzman. Marco Guzman, yeah. Um, there's just a real quick aside here. Crowley wants to summon the sun god Ra now, so we're not done with our Egyptian lore here. And that comes back later. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> Dr. Jekyll is trying to run some experiments on Bigfoot, and Bigfoot wants no part of it. He is being pretty unpleasant to work with. He just got here, and he's already being a pain in the ass. Yeah. But um, Dr. Jekyll wants to implant something in him. He's created the Teleport 5000, or the T5000 <laughs> implant, that allows them to just teleport wherever they want via a Wi-Fi signal and get them past any Archon, like, passcodes and firewalls and stuff like that. So I'm like, that seems kind of OP, not gonna lie. Yeah, it does. <laughs> kidding me? And funny enough, it doesn't ever really come in handy. Another thing they just throw into the mix just to say things to, that sound sciency and cool. This movie is the equivalent of like you buy a pillow online and the pillow arrives and it's not fluffy enough. Mm-hmm. So you 
but you need it to be a certain amount of fluff. So you just keep shoving fluff in there uh-huh. until eventually you can rest your head on it and go to sleep. <laughs> But still, even then, it's still not quite enough. You're never going to get there. And no. Then, and then you go too hard. You know, Then you have like a rock-solid pillar. Yeah. You're like, well, now this is too much. Well, and it's frustrating because you keep adding different kinds of fluff, too. Yeah, so you it's got like goose feathers. Everywhere. You, got, you got sheep wool. Everywhere. <laughs> Why was that funny? You got the fur and of Bigfoot. Foot, 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 fur. fur. <laughs> I bet you the fur of Bigfoot would go for a pretty penny. Six a footy penny. It's a footy penny. <laughs> so uh, the exterminator somehow escaped. Another instance of like they tell us something happens and we don't see how it happens or why it happened. He's just gone now. So exterminator, the robot, got out of there. At the same time that Bigfoot is taking a joyride in the spaceship to clear <laughs> his head because he was getting angry that everybody wanted to do experiments on him and shit, right? <laughs> so he ends up flying near exterminator ship and now they do their own space battle, which again – Pretty lame, nothing cool about any of this. And now the Allies' headquarters is under attack, and it looks like Bigfoot's ship was blown up for a second. It is very hard to tell who is being blown up and when, because it's just a shot, again, the same shot we saw earlier, a shot of a spaceship flying, then it explodes without much of a sound to it. And it's not like, oh no, Bigfoot, it's like, okay, something exploded. So he's not actually dead. He ended up on the Archon mothership somehow. Somehow. It doesn't tell us how. And so he goes into this room where Aleister Crowley is like, we're like praising doing this sermon to a couple of other aliens there's a bunch of like dead bodies and body bags all over the ground yeah man we see this shot like 90 times in the movie and just it never in ex- this movie it never explains what that room is what they are doing at all no and it seemed like they were doing some ritual to like revive somebody or something but and no one's ever revived happens. no nothing at all but so so bigfoot pops into this room he's like oh yeah let's kill us some archons and then in another quick cut now bigfoot is praying to anubis now he's in that same tomb What's going on? And it's like, how did he get here? What is he doing? And he doesn't even know. He's like, honestly, I just agreed with that uh, Alistair guy because he was weirding me out. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll go over here. I'm still definitely on the side of the allies, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Anubis is basically like, you're on the side of the Archons now. He's like, oh, hell no. I hate those guys. No, I just kind of wanted to get out of there. What's uh, what's your <laughs> deal here? And Anubis is basically done playing with the lives of mortals at this point. So he tells Bigfoot, and I quote, go fuck yourself. Yeah, dude. Because Anubis is done. He's he, He's had enough of this. Um, back with the allies, VH is about to get the T-5000 implant in him, right? But it sounds risky here, you know? It sounds like it might be a big risk. But then, but then, in another obnoxiously horny turn of events, this is the best Dr. Thing. Jekyll is just like, oh yeah, by the way, this new implant will give him in- advanced sexual prowess. Like, yeah, dude. Why? Why is that happening? Because at this point, there have already been several lines of Princess Callie, the leader of the Alliance, and VH definitely flirting with each other. Oh, yeah. Like, in the worst way there's, possible. There's even a line a couple scenes earlier where over, like, the, the open channel headset that they're talking through, she's like, I want to fuck your brains out. She but, says that. She says it in a weird way, though. She's like, uh, I want to bop you. I'm no, because, over here. I'm bop because, you. because the subtitle said that. She definitely said fuck, but it said bop. Oh. So it said, I want to bop your brains I out. I, I was like, bop. what? So after he gets his sexual prowess implant, they do bop each other for no reason. It's just a sequence of them grunting and moaning over shots of the space shuttle. It was not important. I really hated it. No, it was incredibly important, actually. They do kind of bring it back, don't they? Because VH is out going to get a sandwich after the act, and no who's in like the main the main hub of this this headquarters? It's the, it's the god Ra. It's the god Ra. It's the sun god Ra. Apparently, during the bopping, um, VH grunting accident accidentally summoned Ra. Because, like, he was yelling Ra's name. Like, he was going, like, super Saiyan at the uh, end of it. Ra! Uh, Ra! <laughs> and so, it's, it's Guess just... Guess you could say they fucked him Ra. It's just so funny because he's Nothing? like, you, 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 that, that must have, you must have some sexual Nothing. prowess. Like, you, you did it, yes, fucked him Ra. Nothing. I was trying to move fast. Nothing. <laughs> but he he, it's, he he bopped so hard, he summoned a literal god, which yep. is crazy. But Ra says he can grant wishes for Van Helsing 666, which has no implications whatsoever. He's just the 666th clone of Van Helsing. I mean, that's pretty significant, man. That number is, like, a lot. Yeah. And it's a 
been important. So, <laughs> so uh, VH asks Ra, he's like, how can we stop this war? That is my one wish, right? Then in a flash of light, the leader of the Archons, Wrathchild, has been teleported to the Ally headquarters, as well as Bigfoot. Now they're all just gathered around this table talking to Ra right now. Yeah, dude. So Ra tells VH that the answer to end this war resides back on Earth in Area 51. I really feel like BC-14 just wanted to throw as much shit in here as he possibly could. Just this, yeah. just this gumbo of all this crazy shit going as much as he possibly could so then they start to discuss their master plan and it's funny they're doing that right in front of Wrathchild like the leader of the Archons like why would you talk with him right there it doesn't make any sense no so so it looks like Alistair is gathering all of these aliens starting to prep for this big battle and the uh, the allies they are on earth right now at area 51 now Wrathchild tells them they were double crossed by Ra because remember earlier when I said uh, Alistair wanted to summon Ra I guess they did Ra was part of their plan and so now they're all at Area 51. Then Wrathchild teleports all of them back to the Archon headquarters. Yep. Felt like an unnecessary step. Like, why do we need to all go of there? This is unnecessary. Really, though. But what is really funny in the sequence, though, is it is now um, VH, Princess Callie, and Bigfoot get teleported back to the Archon headquarters with Wrathchild. Wrathchild looks around as he's talking about, like, haha, we double crossed. Wait a minute. There's just two of you. Where's the third one? Then you get a cut to Bigfoot fucking hauling ass, like, running as fast as he possibly can down some long hallway. The animation on there is probably my favorite just it's because of how so ridiculous funny. it was. It is so funny. He's got wide eyes, like arms chugging, just like huffing and puffing. It was the <laughs> funniest thing in the whole movie. But um, so he makes a break for it and manages to get on a ship out of there somehow. Again, it doesn't show us how, where, what. Yeah. He's just on a ship now. He made it, I guess. Yep. So now they're doing a big battle. The uh, the allies are tri- are shooting on the uh, the mothership of the of the uh, the Archons. Right. One of the alien members of the Ally team finds fuel tanks on the Archon space headquarters and just blows it up immediately. Yep. It's like the Death Star, but like immediate and completely exposed. Oh, yeah. It took no doing whatsoever. But VH and Princess Callie were still on board that ship. Oh, oh no. no, they're 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 gonna be dead. But they're okay because they managed to escape in the secret weapon of the Archons. Apparently, <gasps> it's just this big ass space bomb. That is also a spacecraft that they can fly in. Yeah, so they said it was a bomb, but it was actually just like it was like almost a one for one shot of like this the thing that launches out of uh like NASA ships. It's like space shuttles, yeah. Yeah, like to get back to Earth. Yes, like exactly. That pod. It was like it was exactly that. It is in no way, shape, or form a big ass bomb, but they, no. they're trying to convince us that it is. So now they they escape safe. They're like, okay, we're fine. And now they are hurtling towards the Ally headquarters. And Callie is on the headset talking to um to like one of the one of the robots on board their ship. And she's like, You need to hook us in and, and, and stop our momentum so we don't like blast you guys. And then it just happens. It just works, I guess. Yep. Because just, now the screen just blacks out, and then the next scene is um, VH and Callie walking down down a hallway on the ship, safe and sound with Bigfoot. So it's yep. like, I guess it just worked out. It just worked out. Good job, everybody. Thank we you. did it. I'm glad that climactic moment and that tension really paid off. So now they're talking with Bigfoot, and they offer Bigfoot like a title within their ranks. Like, you know, Bigfoot, you're a good guy. You don't have to run off and be cold and aloof. Why don't you join us on the ally team? But he's just like, no, I'd really rather just like disappear on some abandoned planet. Like, that's kind of, that's that's where I'd like to do. Right? I don't think that happens, though, eight movies after. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, they also kidnapped Executioner again, and now he's in another holding cell that is apparently, like, built more specifically for him. Like, it's blast-proof, it's explosion whatever, you know, you, like, you cannot get out of this thing. And they're awaiting, like, the judge's order to execute him. I'm like, wow, they, they really are, they're following a lot of rules here for a movie that has not followed a lot of rules this nope. entire time. <laughs> Who is this judge? What is happening here? <laughs> so then, the movie pretty much ends with VH and Callie about to have sex again and and the weirdest thing is the very final shot of this movie is a repeat of that shot of bigfoot running through the hallway Yeah, there's another emergency they have to get to it yeah and he's just it's kind of in slow motion this time but that's it then then roll the credits like what but you forgot what? the dialogue isaac yeah give me some dialogue please the dialogue of this that was a good work at, well callie here, you want to... No, I don't know if I want to do it with you. Uh, yeah, no, that's, let's do it. No, no, let's do it. Okay. You, be, you be VH, I'll be Kelly. Okay. <laughs> All right, so go, go for it then. Good workout. <sighs> Helps with the tension. I can think of other things to help with that. Yeah, such as... Why don't you kick back and spread them and I'll show you. <laughs> there you go, threatening with a good time again. <laughs> what can I say? We, let's do let's do yours. We have to enjoy our time. We have to enjoy our time when we get it. 
oh, oh, you're gonna get it, all right. Come here, princess. <laughs> Good lord. And then his his best line in the best line. If this keeps up, I'm gonna need another clone of myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we know. We just the, wrote our own fan fiction. The libido of uh, of Van Helsing was very low, very very minuscule. I don't want to go back to that script ever again. <laughs> no, that was that was terrible, and I'm sure there's a lot more we could have gotten into with that script. I just don't there think was, we need to subject it, you to any of that, guys. But I'm it was sorry. all like that. That was all. It was all like that. It was all that stuff. It was, it was just. just so much. I feel like we there was a lot of this movie we didn't talk about, but like we did, we talked about it all though. What, what else is there? All, what else? Is there to else. say like it's just repeat shots of a lot of nonsense happening like like should we tell them anything that goes on in the other movies like what are some what are some hits from the from the others well like so in the next one they get this like megalodon that they have to fight which is just like it's like king shark from the from the yeah. suicide squad movie or it's just like a big buff shark guy <laughs> and then we talked a little bit about trump the one where he shoots up into space he becomes an enemy there's Derek, an entire sequence in we, trump we haven't talked about the best part about yeah. the trump versus the illuminati movie <laughs> so first off his his character model is literally just like an orange spacesuit man like a nasa orange spacesuit uh -huh. and then in certain lighting you can see trump's face behind the helmet with yep. his mouth like slightly moving you can tell and like, i did find that character model by you the did way. yeah yeah i did <laughs> you can definitely tell the scenes where they wanted you to see his face and other other scenes the the helmet is too tinted you can't see his face behind it at first i actually thought they had like superimposed trump's face over over the the helmet but no there actually is a whole last yeah, character model that whole. looks that way um, and then there's there's Trump for I mean <laughs> oh well the best part Please. of this one I was like, sorry don't you cannot move on this there, is the best part there's a moment where he's talking to the Illuminati or the Archons or whatever mm -hmm. about like he's gonna win or he's gonna beat them or something and then he just tells his spaceship to play music and then they fucking have him Fortnite dance in front of he all of these aliens an entire like must have been like pre-programmed dance that they put onto this like Donald Trump spaceman model yeah and then just it had was him obviously do... pre-programmed because there were certain times his arm would like stretch oh, out yeah. super long it looked like like animation from like a just dance or like yeah. like literally a Fortnite dance just strung into each other it was so funny what's the funniest thing about it is like the archons are standing right in front of them they're like this cool little gang there's like three shorter little alien dudes and then there's one really tall really buff alien that really buff alien is kind of like not in his head along he's like you know i can kind of get into this and they just sit and let him dance for so long <laughs> It's the it's incredible. If you watch nothing else, go check out that sequence specifically because it is just pure ridiculousness. So then you, you got like Tickles the Clown, who's like he's just the mauler of innocence. He it's basically Suicide Squad where he's like joining the good guys. The freaking the tagline for this movie Please, please. Hold your screams. In space, no one can hear you laugh. In space, everyone can hear you laugh. Thank you very much. Based on your, <laughs> your sound quality here. But and he just kind of like joins the gang. It feels like an anime, like like One Piece or something, where like they get these all of these enemies through yes. these movies that just keep joining them. Because like they just keep Megalodon up. joins them, you know. I'm assuming Trump joins them. Maybe. I don't know if he lives through the movie. I don't remember I don't seeing know, him man. in other ones. I don't know. But yeah, like what are some other monsters we see in there? So we see the Megalodon, which is just a big buff shark. We see a similar like humanoid buff creature with a crocodile head. Yeah. That, that doesn't talk. Doesn't, doesn't talk. have any. There's also like a kind of cool looking crab humanoid also yeah. doesn't talk. Also, there's the pumpkin head dude who's like a we thought it was like the headless horse. It was I like think, an end maybe? credit seat. It's like it's like imagine a jack o' lantern that's got a bunch of nails poked into he it. Like it's pretty cool. It's like from head. Hellraiser. Yeah. I thought it was a cool design, but we never. Uh, I didn't see any other instances of him. The Krampus one was interesting. The Krampus was kind of neat. What's Krampus funny, was a cool design. There, remember how I mentioned that buff archon that was kind of into Trump's dancing? That guy's apparently Lucifer, and the Krampus model looks a lot more like Lucifer than that guy does. Yeah, because he's got these big old horns, this skull type face. He's like chains and like metal pokey bits standing sticking up out of his arms kind of a cool design not gonna lie but i can't really give that much credit to bc14 he didn't model them <laughs> in in trump versus the illuminati uh Stalin is in an alien's body. Yeah, Stalin and is in this movie, by the way. I guess we forgot to mention I that. I forgot one. about Stalin. He's Because in... all he does is there's like four aliens in front of him in a room like they're about to go like on a, on a battle or something like yeah, that. And, he just and he's just like, hey, it's me. Let's, let's stop the bad guys. That's a really good Stalin, actually. That but, sounds exactly like But it. like his pitch is definitely like shifted upwards yeah. for sure. And in but Trump that's all versus, he does. In Trump versus the Illuminati, though, the the Kennedys, like of JF Kennedy, yeah. they they put him in a wheelchair. They they put they, Lucifer in a wheelchair. 
Yeah, the, yeah. Was it Lucifer? I think it was. Yeah, Lucifer. It was Lucifer. Yeah. They put Lucifer in a wheelchair. I Lucifer's just, always there. Also there. It's all. It almost makes me curious enough to watch them, but then you start watching them and you feel your life essence drain out of you, and you're like, so, I cannot. I'm sorry. <laughs> something really interesting happened though. So like, it was obvious. BC14 ran out of this animated oh, footage that uh-huh. he had. So progressively as these movies get on they use more and more stock footage from like Shutterstock yes of like real people of other people's yep, animations just doing of things. things again no AI but it is all just like Shutterstock images and videos he of all basically, these crazy things he basically scrapbooked these movies together by yep. like ga- grabbing all of these pre-existing assets and putting them together having voice actors voice them and then calling it a movie yeah, man. but yes like progressively throughout them by the ninth movie it's like 60-70% of the just like At stock footage, least. right? I mean, because it slowly Van builds up Helsing, till then. We watched w- skipping through that one. It was like ninety percent stock. Oh, footage. absolutely, yeah. It was just it was so so much. Yeah. But yeah, so that's uh, that's BC 14's uh, Bigfoot versus the Illuminati, and God, was it a joy it ride, was huh? Freaking, it was a ride. Man. Shall we discuss our expectations yeah. at all? Um, my my first one was a laugh out loud fest, and absolutely, I was. D- Derek can attest to this. I was slamming my head into yeah. pillows. No, me too, at moments because I was just so dumbfounded at what was in front of me. I was cackling. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's your first horrible animation? I mean. Yeah, man. Like, just sad. You can't even call it animation because they literally just rigged these like models and they just moved them around. Like, so the the scene where Crowley is praying, mm-hmm. he literally is just sitting there, and you can see on his fingers them just like moving up and down, kind of wiggling, like, wiggling, separate of the rest of the hand because they didn't rig it properly. Oh, it's so bad. It's just, and, and what's funny is like to describe the way they are animated, it feels like, you know how when you bump into a pedestrian in Grand Theft Auto, yes. when they're kind of yelling yeah. at you, the way their arms move yeah. kind of like not realistically, it's all that kind it's of all stuff. That, yeah. It's just very, very cookie cutter kind of stuff. I said more sci-fi than horror and like, where was the horror? I mean, just putting in names like Van Helsing and Dr. Jekyll does not automatically make it a horror movie. So this one was wholeheartedly a sci-fi movie. But I, I still I thought it was a funny time. I don't yeah. regret it. Uh, some of the worst writing ever on this podcast. I mean, yeah, man. Like, it, the writing wasn't necessarily bad. It just well, wasn't. It was just like. He took his first draft and rolled, rolled with it, right? Yes. Because the, it, there's no way that he did revisions no there was there was no polish on any of this no refinement he just wrote it once he said that's good get it out of here i mean that's what he did with the whole movie so uh, all of well them, there's right? there's like certain shots that like mess up like there's there's a time where the scene is supposed to transition and one shot was smaller than the the shot it was transitioning to yes so it literally overlaid two shots on top of each other and you can see right down to the bottom of the screen where the next shot is about to be and before the big first shot fur. goes away it was very funny I said a Bigfoot will speak sparingly, and I wish, I wish I was right about yeah. this one. I found Bigfoot's voice quite offensive and just ridiculous yeah, most of the too. time. Really wish too. he didn't speak as much as he did. Every character they think of was shoved into the story. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it only gets worse and worse and worse. I mean, frick, where do you ever get Aleister Crowley, Lucifer, Van Helsing, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, yeah. that princess? <laughs> princess Callie, there's Atlanteans in there, Donald Trump makes an appearance, you know, there's Frankenstein, Wolfman, Crocodile, Men, and Crowley. Like, what the tickles the clown? Like, what is going on? Uh, I said, voice actors (laughs) tried their best, you know, and I usually like to give the benefit of the doubt to people in such awful movies, but these actors were not it. Not to mention, like, six of them were voiced by the same guy. Yeah, man. In yours? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Sorry. I, this movie (laughs) broke me. I don't even know how to talk. Derek is a broken man now. Every character. Did I say that one? Every character. Are we have four? Where are we? I'm lost. Barely <laughs> worth watching for the podcast. I think this scraped the edge. It was arguably the scariest movie we've ever watched. Though. Surely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the most scared I've ever been, for sure. Uh, and then I said my last one was the PlayStation can produce mind-boggling effects. <laughs> Wowee, wow, was that animation pretty dreadful. Yeah, it felt like I was watching Eiffel 65's music video for Blue Dabba Dee, but like not in the fun way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're so right. Yes, really. It's another really good like description of this movie. Uh, voice acting will be so rough. I really don't want to comment it's like what you said no it was comment. kind of like offensive i don't 
they they give it their best. Mm-hmm. And that's unfortunate. So so surprises if we could come up with any. Um, I was just surprised at how unnecessarily horny it was. Like sixty percent of the time, the only instance where that horniness like came in handy, quote unquote, no pun intended, was when VH accidentally summoned Raw, which was so ridiculous. Yeah. What the hell was that about? I was surprised by how batshit crazy all of this plot was. Like, how could such a movie exist, and how could there be so many to follow it? Like, you don't think anyone would stop him after the first one or even the first two? Like, yeah, no, I, no, no. I don't understand. I was surprised by how fast the exposition was thrust at us. Like, I really felt like I struggled to keep up with it and was lost more than I wasn't, especially the Me very too. beginning of the movie. is like, nothing but exposition, you know? The Earth has been destroyed by AI, you know? The Archons are the aliens. They're also the Illuminati. Bigfoot was there. Yeah. Ben Helsing, Dr. Jekyll, like, slow down, everybody. Slow <laughs> this down. is a lot. And my final surprise was just, like, how much I laughed at it. Definitely not with it, but certainly at it. Just bellowing out laughter like a lunatic. <laughs> yeah, dude. How this is actually a movie that actually got made surprises yeah. me. Like, I mean, we've kind of talked about it, but like, what? <laughs> and it's uh, mostly funded by the one dude, right? So I yeah. guess it only has to go through him, but yeah. still. The absolute absurdity that everything was, just like the, all of the repeated shots, all the different characters, the barely followable plot line, like all of it, all of it. Uh, the repeated shots, just the sexual innuendo of it all, especially how horny some of the characters were for basically no reason. And yeah, that's... that's oh, it. man, yeah. So, uh, so verdict's time. I think... You could probably guess here for me, Verdict, that was unwatchable. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm sad that our very first animated movie for this podcast was such a flop, but this one was brutal to get through. The only reason I survived was because it was just ludicrous enough to enjoy my time, but just by laughing all the way through it, you know? The fact that it is definitely not a horror movie aside, like this movie was convoluted, unnecessarily horny, so poorly written and acted on every level, and I feel like my life has been drained from me. Kind of like that like water machine in The Princess Bride ride like this movie this movie drained me of of my life you know this so this movie had some big shoes or big feet to fill and it did not deliver in the slightest oh my god that was garbageable uh-huh. i don't think i've ever said that one nope this trash fire of a quote-unquote movie isn't worth your time maybe if you have some morbid curiosity and like 10 friends with some libation it could be a funny good time to laugh at for a half hour but it is not worth delving any energy into especially since no energy was put into the movie maybe sass watch something else that brings you joy instead of having it sapped from you oh geez you're so right why are you happy did you hear some people are I do a dance. He really I do wants, a little dance for you today. He really wants a theme song. I'm He's doing, been asking it for weeks. I'm trying to distract you. The hills are alive with the sounds of trivia. No trivia. Because I couldn't find any. And I'm here to distract you hey, from that point. I have a question for you, though. According, can, can I ask you a question? <laughs> trivia. Trivia. Yeah, what, trivia. what is going so you know on? Your cousin, it is me, Count Trivia. You know your, oh, my God. You know your cousin Dracula? My cousin. Uh, yeah, what about him, man? What What would you get said? I just, you know, he's just. He's the popular one, you know. He doesn't even—he's he's just a vampire, just like I'm a vampire, and it doesn't make sense why he gets to be popular and I don't. What about Edward? Do you like Edward? Or, oh, me and Edward are tight. You know, we go play baseball all the time. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a great man. I love Lestat? that guy. Lestat, you like Lestat? Lestat is, you know, give or take. You know, he, he could come and go. It's fine. Oh, he gives and takes and comes. All of the above. Yes, of course. Yes, that's what he's known for. What about Nosferatu? No, sir. Don't mention that name. Don't you say that name. That's evil. That is evil incarnate. I do not want you to hear you say that. What about Jimmy Kimmel? Jimmy Kimmel's all right. Uh, Dr. Phil. Love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Phil is a vampire. Do you know that? <laughs> um, so I didn't, uh, couldn't find a lot of trivia. So I have one here for you. I just hope you will take it. And I'm going to fly away now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's really not much pri- trivia proper for this one. So the best I got for you is the fact that one actor, Marco Guzman, played six different characters in this movie, including Van Helsing, 666, Bigfoot, Ra, Stalin, Silas, and Zio. All of those characters are voiced by the same one guy. And you, Hands off to you, sir. You've And you only slightly offended us once. And I don't know if it's a great thing, but you did it. 
and that's okay. That's that, that's great. Uh, join us next week. We will be watching Hobgoblins from hob, 1988. Hob, hob, hob. This one does have an, uh, a rotten, rotten Tomatoes review. It is only on the audience side. It is sitting at 11% on the audience side. The synopsis for Hobgoblins says, A group of tiny, lethal creatures end up going on a terrifying rampage after escaping from a studio vault. <sighs> so yeah, join us next week uh, on, on that one. That'll be a fun one. I'm excited. I hope it is fun enough because there are also I know there's at least a sequel to Hobgoblins so there's Hobgoblins 2 and I would kind of like to visit that one at some point in the future because I think it'd be a yeah. really, really fun thing to do uh, but that's our podcast before we send you on our way though don't think we forgot don't think we forgot your Garfield horror scope yeah, ladies man. and gentlemen please hold we your gotta horses we gotta cleanse your palate we gotta today. cleanse your palate of that awful movie we just disco- described to you guys so we've got a Garfield horror scope to think on over the week before we send you on your way today is April 28th of 2024. So we got a lovely comic of several panels of Garfield just like taking naps in various positions at any time he can. Just a standard nap, you know, taking a nap on a recliner, taking a nap when someone is telling you a boring story, or just napping in the sun, you know. Derek, do you have somebody you, you relate to today? Uh yeah, I think I want to be Garfield. You can be Garfield. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, what about you? Uh I'm gonna be the Rave Sunshine. Yeah, you're going to be the Ray of Sunshine. Yeah, this so, is my second choice. Actually. Okay, yeah. So, so let's, tell me about okay. Garfield. So sometimes in life, you know, you're you're tired, and it's okay to nap. It's okay to take time for yourself because nothing is better than self care. And yes, Garfield is sleeping through all these things that like are are maybe important to him, but like. Nothing is more important than self-care. And so take time for yourself. If you have to take a nap, take a nap. Don't be ashamed. Just make sure you set an alarm. Yep. And to be simply put, be the ray of sunshine. Be that comforting source, that warming source in a person's life that says, you know, hey, you can nap around me. It's all right. I'm here for you to do that. I am the comforting source of light in your life. So be the light in someone's life this next week. Thank you for joining us yet again. Um, Please, if you feel so inclined, follow us on all of our socials. We are on Instagram at that underscore was underscore horrible. Twitter at TWH podcast. Facebook at that was horrible podcast. YouTube at that was horrible. And TikTok at that was horrible. For as long as it is uh, not banned in the United States. Did you hear about that? Oh, yeah, I did hear that. <laughs> That's like that. a whole thing. So who knows how much longer it'll be there. But until we'll it see. is gone, we will keep doing it there. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I've been Isaac. And I've been Derek. Not High Horse Palomino. Not High Horse Palomino. <laughs> but I would be. He's still building boxes up into the stratosphere. We see him. Hey, High Horse. How you doing up there? <laughs> this, your voice sounds kind of funny. But <laughs> we tell the audience to, uh, to uh, Garfield be with them. <laughs> as always <laughs> as always Garfield, Garfield be, be with, with you, you and stay, stay spooky. spooky goodbye